Well, hello again. We have a lot to cover now. Um, I've been doing a lot of research lately and trying to figure out what's the best way to approach all of this. And the reason is it gets a little bit complicated. <laughs> and it's very important to understanding Levi um, in covering the book of Zechariah and some other things. But in order to cover the book of Zechariah, it's important to understand the political atmosphere at the time. In my last video, I covered the how the Persian Empire came to be and what the prophet Haggai was saying to the people who were building the temple. And that was during the uh, reign of Darius, or Darius the Great, who was the uh, a king of Persia. Now, after researching further, I found it necessary to go back and recover some of the things about Persia, because there's a bit of a conundrum going on with, with Persian history, mainly surrounding a king named Ahusserus. The king Ahusserus is mentioned several times in the Bible. Some people will say he's the same king every time he's mentioned. Some people will say it's three different kings named Ahusserus. But when you look at Persian history, there is no king Ahusserus. So this is one of those things that um, secular people will point to and say, well, the Bible is incorrect because the Bible talks so much about Ahusserus when there was no Ahusserus. Um, some people will say, well, Ahusserus is just a name that they used for all kings of Persia. And there's just different opinions on who is Ahusserus or whether there even was an Ahusser. So I did a lot of digging into this and, and, and some praying to try to figure out what this is all about. And what I came up with is, it's one of those things where there's still some hidden history. The, the, the fact is, is that the Bible points out the truth continuously. And history does not always point out the truth. What we'll find, if we look at the past, in up until the 1850s, people said there was no Babylon, there was no Assyria. People believed that Greek was the oldest culture in history, the first civilization because they were the oldest known written histories but now since the 1850s the English explorers and some French explorers went around and they um, ended up finding the city of Nineveh they found the city of Ur they found the city of Babylon and they uncovered all of this history. They also found the city of Susa. And all of this um, prehistoric places, which now are known as the earliest civilizations. And they predate Greece by about a thousand years. It's the Sumerian and the Babylonian and Assyrian history. So before that was all discovered, that was all uh, known as fairy tales. So now we have Persian history and media history as um, the same kind of thing. And what we'll talk about, okay, first of all in the Bible, there's a book called Esther. It's about Queen Esther who married the king of Persia. So she became, she was a Jewish woman who became the queen of Persia. And 
in history, in secular history, there is no Jewish woman who was the queen of Persia. So why is there this big discrepancy? Uh, and when Esther was the queen of Persia, the, the Persian king was named Ahusuerus. And we also see Ahusuerus named in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. And we also see Ahusuerus named in the book of Daniel. In Daniel, Ahusuerus is named as the father of Darius, or Darius, who is also called Darius the Mede. So Daniel is giving us some clues here. Darius was a Mede, and he was the son of Ahusuerus. So that would possibly make Ahusuerus a Median king. Now, the, the history that we have of Persia is mostly from a Greek historian called Herodotus. Herodotus is um, known as the father of history because of the book that he wrote, mainly dealing with the Greco-Persian Wars uh, that he recorded. And he recorded all of the known history and legends that he heard and fables that he heard. And he just recorded it all. And he put it into a chronological order saying, well, I don't know if all of this is true, but I'm writing down everything that everybody said and all the stories that I've heard. And since his writing, and he wrote this book called The History, since his writing, much of what he talked about, especially regarding the wars between Greeks and Persians, turned out to be collaborated by discoveries made. They found the battlefields, they found the battle markers, they found, you know, the kings involved, and they, f they put together a lot of things that collaborate what Herodotus says. But there's also a lot of stories and fables in Herodotus's history that are just that. They are fables. And he even calls them fables. He says, uh, I think this is just a fable, but I'm putting it in my book, and this is what people are saying. So there's a, it's, it's like there's a lot of both. There's a lot of fables and there's a lot of true history. Herodotus himself didn't know. He wasn't there. He just recorded what people were telling him. So he is a very valuable source for Persian history and Greek history. But everything he says has to be collaborated in some way. And most of the history of Persia that we have comes from Herodotus because he talks about the Persian kings, um, I think from Cyrus on, and he gives the story. And there are other Greek historians that write also about these same kings who have a different story than Herodotus. And as far as the history of the Medes goes, there's very little known of them because the Persians took their place and the Medes were basically forgotten to history. And I think the, the mainly we just know the, the names of the kings and some of the stories that are just legends. That's all we know about the Medes. And we know the area where they lived generally. So it's, it's, a little, it's one of these things that's a little bit difficult to collaborate with the Bible because the Bible is recording Cyrus, Ahusuerus, Darius, but it doesn't agree with the history recorded by the Greek historians. And there's another um, 
thing. It's a it's a carving on a mountain. It's known as the Bahistan inscription. It's a huge carving that was uh, made by Darius, Darius the Great, the king of Persia. He explains on this great carving his family history. But he disagrees with the prophet Daniel. The prophet Daniel says his father is a Husserus. But he claims that his father is Histapes. And uh, on this chart here we have, this is the chart according to Darius I. You'll see right there at the top, lineage claimed by Darius I. You see? So there's a bit of uh, stories going on here. Some of the legends, I'll go through some of the legends. Okay, the, the, the Persian Empire is known as the Achaemenid Empire. And the reason it's called Achaemenid is because it dates, it goes back, it begins with this guy at the top whose name was Achaemenus, who was the grandfather of Cyrus the first. Um, so that was um, the beginning of the Persian kings. And the story about Cyrus the first is that he was, when his mother was pregnant, when he was born, his father didn't want him to be a king. His father had a dream that he was going to be like a great king of the world. And his father wanted to prevent that because he had another son that he had in mind to be king. And so he paid his servant to go and get rid of that boy because of his mother wasn't of royal blood or things like that. So the servant went and he took the boy from the mother, the baby. But when he went home, his wife had, had just had a stillborn baby. And his wife begged him to allow her to raise the live baby and to use the stillborn baby as proof that he killed Cyrus. So Cyrus was the live baby that she ended up raising. And later on, the um, Cyrus his true identity became known. And because he was of royal blood, his father put him, his father was a Mede, the king of Media, he put him as a ruler in Persia, and that's when Cyrus became a great king, and Persia took over Media. It was before it was a Medo-Persian Empire, and under Cyrus it became the Persian Empire. And and through that the history of the Medes became washed away. Um, that we we can't be sure about their history. And when Cyrus died in battle, he left Cambyses the first his son on the throne. Now Cyrus, he, he had the, uh, he was the one that was prophesied by Isaiah and God called him the anointed, my anointed. And we can get into that later, but basically God is using him as an example that the coming of the Persian Empire is like a marker in history as an example of the coming of the kingdom of Christ, where the end of the Babylonian Empire, as we see in the book of Revelation, the end of Babylon the Great brings on the kingdom of Christ. It's the same in history. The end of the Babylonian Empire brought on the Persian Empire. So, 
it's one of those dualities that we see in prophecy. It's like history repeating itself in a cycle. But it's in, in old times, it was just a shadow of the reality where, where Cyrus was the shadow and Christ is the reality. But Cyrus, he took on, as we studied in, in, in the old Babylonian and Sumerian kingdoms, the king, Cyrus took on the name king of Sumer and Akkad, which is a, and, and king of the four corners, king of Babylon. These were titles from the Babylonian kings who, when, when Sumer and Akkad, there was a, the king of Babylon, they were like two different peoples. And the king of Babylon would take on the title king of Sumer and Akkad as king of both peoples. So Cyrus took on those, those titles and he also took on the title of king of the world. Cambyses, his son, took on the title king of kings, king of Babylon, pharaoh of Egypt, because it was Cambyses who added Egypt to the Persian Empire, and king of countries. So you see this, this, uh, this title, king of kings, that is a title that was claimed by Jesus Christ and by Christians. Um, so this, this, this also shows a duality in history, the king of kings, with the king of kings of Christ. It's, it's the kingdom of Cyrus with the kingdom of Christ. And you'll see that the, um, the Persian kings from that time on held those titles. King of kings, king of Babylon, king of Persia, pharaoh of Egypt, king of countries. So... The, the, this history that we see comes from an inscription on the side of a mountain, which is in Iran. And it's called the Bahistan Inscription. And it's known as a, uh, like a Rosetta Stone. Uh, the Rosetta Stone, the original Rosetta Stone, was found in Egypt. And it has an inscription in hieroglyphic language the picture language of the Egyptians. And then it had the same writing, the same story written in three languages, hieroglyphic, old Egyptian script, and ancient Greek script. So because the, 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 the historians or linguists knew ancient Greek, they could use that Rosetta Stone to figure out how to read hieroglyph hieroglyphics and also how to read the ancient Egyptian script because they had, they had the same story in all three languages. So now, since the Rosetta Stone was discovered and allowed them to read those more ancient languages, anything that gives them that ability is known as a Rosetta Stone. So this carving on the mountain commissioned by Darius, the king of Persia, was also known as uh, a Rosetta Stone because it was also written in three different languages. It was written in Old Persian, which they knew, and it was also written in Elamite and in Babylonian. Uh, Babylonian is a... a a later date of Akkadian. So this helped them, since they knew Old Persian, it helped them to decipher the Akkadian and the Elamite language. So it's known as another Rosetta Stone. And on the bottom of this big inscription on the mountain, it's all about Darius and his conquests and all the liars that he got rid of. And his family tree that he claimed. 
But see, the true story, or there's a few different stories about Darius and his, I think there's seven, his seven um, helpers that helped him overthrow the, the throne. Because what happened was when, Cy when, when Cyrus, when Cambyses I died, he left his son, Cyrus II, on the throne. And when Cyrus II was off in Egypt taking care of a revolt, his son, Cambyses II, was murdered by this guy named Bardia. And Bardia claimed to be Smyrdas, the other son of Cyrus II, who Cambyses II had killed. So there's all these rivalries going on. So Bardia was found to be an imposter, and he was found out by Darius the Mede who was a, a, of a royal blood in Persia related to the Medes, but not directly related to Cyrus. Darius married the daughter of Cyrus to give himself a connection to the throne. But he overthrew Bardia, the imposter, and, and put himself on the throne. Uh, him and seven others, and they they all had their discussion about who got to take the throne, and Darius won. He got the throne. But the, he then put his whole history on this mountain, and it could be all just a bunch of bull. Um, he, he's making himself connections to the throne through the Persians. One in reality, Daniel exposes him as a Mede, Darius the Mede. And he also calls him the son of Ahusuerus. So Ahusuerus was more than likely a Median king who took on a, a Jewish princess as his queen over all of Medo-Persia. Medo That's my guess. But history does not collaborate this. There is no discovery made yet to, to tell us who Ahusuerus actually is. A lot of people think he's Xerxes I. But in the book of Esther, the Jews have not yet returned to um, Jerusalem. They were in captivity and the book of Esther tells of, a, of a, a plot to kill all the Jews that was uncovered by Queen Esther and how the Jews instead killed their enemies. And they still uh, celebrate the day of Purim, which, which uh, com commemorates the, these events. And... In Esther chapter 10, verse 2, it says, or verse 1 and 2, it says, And the king Ahusuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea, and all the acts of his power and of his might, and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Media and Persia? So the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Media and Persia, we don't have. Unless it's written on copper or silver or baked into a tablet, we're not going to have it. The Jewish history, they religiously copied it over and over we don't have the originals, but we have copies. And the oldest copies found have been uh, about 100 BC, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they line up exactly with the same writings that we have. So it shows that at least from that time, they've been accurate. So more than likely, they've been accurately co copied right from 
the time that they claim to be written. Okay, so um, so the history Darius gives of himself probably isn't accurate. It's probably him making himself connected to the throne in a much stronger way so that the Medes and the Persians both can accept him as royal. And um, that's that. Daniel is also contested by historians because they say, well, he just knew so much. There's no way he could have known so much about the history of the Greeks that happened after him. He must have been born much later. But Jesus Christ attests Daniel as a prophet. Jesus Christ quotes Daniel as a prophet. So, and, and Jesus Christ not only does that, but the book of Daniel, it's quite deep prophecy in great detail that seems to speak a lot about um, events happening during the uh, second and third century BC. But Jesus puts Daniel's prophecy, the fulfillment of it, as at the end of time, as that hasn't even happened yet. So that, that makes Daniel a very interesting prophet. So historians who do not believe the Bible to be anything more than written by magicians in ancient times, they will always, um, anything that is not directly proven with beyond a doubt, they will always come up with a story about how it's a fable. And this is just one of those things that you'll, you'll never prove. Um, but we don't really have the, the all of um, collaborated history of Persia or media to go by. And this Persia is in Iran. Um, the, the center of power for Persia is in Iran. So the Iranians, you know, I can't imagine them uncovering something that proves there's a Queen Esther, a Jewish queen of Persia. I can't uh, imagine them finding something like that and letting the world know about it. It's not going to happen. It's, they probably are not going to find it. Things like that are found when God allows it to be found. So it hasn't been found. So until then, we have to go by faith that because of all the rest of the Bible, we can believe Daniel is correct because we believe Jesus is correct. And we be believe Esther is correct because we believe Daniel is correct. And there's a lot of Bible that was thought to be fables, which has been vindicated, but there's a, a lot of it that hasn't been vindicated. So this is one of those parts. Um, we don't have a lot of history directly from the Persians about Persia. And we don't have anything directly from the Medes about Media. So it's just one of those things of history that we're listening to other sources who heard stories from other people, and that's all we have. And we have the Bible, which disagrees with them. But the Bible, time and time again, whenever anything has been collaborated, the Bible is found to be correct and truthful about the history. So the Bible says, Ahusserus was the father of Darius, the Mede. And that's about all we know. So using that, I just wanted to lay this out because it becomes important when we start looking at Zechariah. And we're going to take a little look at Daniel too. And, and this kind of stuff becomes important because this... Oh, that's my 30-minute timer. 
So we're going to wrap this up pretty quick. So this becomes very important because these events take place where the Old Testament ends. There's a long gap where the Old Testament ends and where the New Testament begins. And this is where just before and during the rebuilding of the temple that was destroyed by Babylon. And these events are like the, um, the foreshadowing of the end of the world and the, king, the coming kingdom of Christ. So during these events, there was a great time of deception going on. And as we will see in Zechariah, Satan was very involved with this in trying to confuse the history, trying to stop the temple from being rebuilt, um, trying to uh, prevent God's kingdom from developing any further. So we're going to see this. And so, so this, looking at this Persian history kind of gives us a glimpse that, yes, there were some problems um, and there still are. They haven't been resolved yet. Now, those things, uh, the proof might come out uh, eventually, some proof that shows, oh, now we know who Arhusurus who, was. Now we have some history of the Medes, but the, those histories are buried in Iran. It's not going to happen until something changes in Iran, because Iran would never let that happen. If they found that, they would destroy it, likely. Because if you meet any Iranian, the Iranian people are, that I've met are very generally good people. They don't like the government that is in Iran right now. It's a, it's a theocracy, Muslim theocracy. It's very um, brutal government. So um, they're more interested in their theocracy than they are in any truth. So... Um, Iranians are very proudly identify themselves as Persian and as they should be proud. Uh, it's a very rich history, Persia. Um, but we're not going to see anything out of Iran that makes a Jewish queen over Persia. It's just not going to happen until things change there. So. That's where we're at with Persian and Median history. It's what the Greeks knew. And they were not exactly right about everything either. They, they saw Assyria as a great ancient kingdom, a legendary kingdom that they had known of. And when the Greeks finally conquered the area that was Persia, um, they found a battleground in what today would be called Syria. And it was the Greeks who named the area Syria because they thought that was Assyria, because they found a battle marker in, on the battle between Egypt and Assyria, which happened far from Nineveh, far from the original land of Assyria. So that's why Syria is not even connected to the original Assyria. Because the Greeks found this battle marker and they thought, this is Syria. And they, the Greeks called it Syria. So now we have Syria and Assyria. So they're, they're you know, it's a confusion in history that happened um, during those times that um, even historians today, they have to learn that where the name Syria comes from. And in the older Bibles, you will also see it called Syria, 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 when it's actually talking about Aram, which is the area around Damascus. Um, so Syria is the Greek way of saying Assyria, but they've 
they identified the wrong place as Assyria. And they also pretty much wiped out a lot of the history of Persia. And the Persians wiped out a lot of the history of media. So, you know, because of all these things, the history is a little foggy in some areas. And that's what we got. So I'll conclude this part of our study. And we'll see you in the next part. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you again.